lot of people who recognize the name Alice Cooper have no idea that he's a Christian. Tell us how and when you came to the faith. You know, I'm the prodigal son, for one thing. I, I'm the perfect example of the prodigal son. Uh, my dad was a pastor. My grandfather was an evangelist. Actually, both my dad and my grandfather were evangelists. And uh, my wife's father is a Baptist pastor. So I grew up in the church, and I was... All of my friends were church kids. I had so much fun. I mean, I was in church on Sunday, Wednesday night, uh, Friday nights, I mean, it was, it, all my social life was based around kids in the church. And, um, and that was great. And, and it got to high school, and all of a sudden, the Beatles came out. And I went, oh, well, that's kind of, you know, and I was a natural mimic anyways. So I watched the Beatles, and I said, well, that would be fun to do. Being in a hit band with hit records and is getting as big as we got, is like winning the lottery about three times. It just doesn't happen. You know, we were definitely the underdogs in the whole thing, and we kept going, well, we're never gonna make it. This is fun, you know, to do this, and then we'll go get real jobs. And we kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, there we were. You know, and, and then on top of it, being creative, I looked around and I went, there's no villains in rock and roll. Why not? Why not create Rock's ultimate villain, you know? And still, without thinking, well, why would, how would that bother? It wouldn't affect my faith at all. You know, the Bible's full of villains. You know, I'll be this villain. And I, and I gave Alice his perimeter, you know, his areas where he wouldn't go past. And I still find songs that from the first albums that are totally got Christian, all kinds of Christian... Uh, uh, by words going all the way through it, yeah. you know, because it's, it comes out of you what's in you. Yeah, yeah. So songs like Second Coming and things like that were all pretty much always warning about Satan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that's really the core kind of message that's in the music, isn't it? It always has been. Yeah. And the weird thing was, even though my image was the most scary, I terrified TBS, I think. Yeah. Because, of, yeah, first of all, they never heard my song. They never actually listened to my songs because almost everything I wrote was good and evil. Don't pick evil. Yeah. You know, even when I wasn't Christian, I was saying that. You know, uh, uh, God and the devil. Don't pick the devil. It's, it's a bad idea. You know, um, but you know, all they saw was the image. All they saw was, and that was okay. We've all heard of the Gospel of Matthew, Mark. Luke and John. What is the gospel according to Alice? If you were to summarize the message that so influenced your life, what would it be? If it says that Jonah swallowed, was swallowed by a, by a whale, then that means it. If it's, I don't believe this stuff where it's all, well, you know, it's just kind of, those are all parables and they meant this. And, no. I say if it says it, it meant it. You know, and people will laugh at me and say, well, you know, I mean, you can't really believe that. And I go, well, if I can believe that God created the world, and created everything in it, why wouldn't I believe a simple thing like that? That's not a hard thing. You know, the very fact that he cared enough about me to save my life about 20 times, you know, and uh, help me survive a million different things to put me where I am now. And, and then the challenge I have now being a Christian in the rock business. You know, he kind of put me in the Philistines, in the camp of the Philistines, which is okay. Yeah, what's that like? Well, you have to live your life every day. You have to you have to live your faith. You know, I mean, I'm living in a world that's not my world. I know that, but I live in it, and I try to live my faith every day in it. If I can live, that's my testimony. I don't need to be going out. If, if somebody mentions, you know, my faith, I definitely talk about it in interviews and things like that. I mean, I'm very open about it. I, I never ever. I'm never uh, under a quilt about who I am. Uh, but I'm not going to be the one that says, now sit down, I'm going to tell you about this. And I'm, you know, yeah. I'm not going to be the car salesman. Oh, well, what people don't realize, when you become a Christian, does not make it any easier. It makes it harder. It makes your life harder. It makes your soul at ease with God because you know where you're at with Him. It doesn't make your social life or your normal life in America any easier. In fact, it puts you under the microscope. Sometimes I think that, you know, TV evangelism is one of 
Satan's greatest weapons. They put these guys on a pedestal, and all of a sudden they get caught with a prostitute, and all. And every Christian I know then yeah. is under the gun. Right. So I, you don't think that that's yeah, kind of set up? Burst. Yeah, I'm telling you. You know, I, the devil is very smart. He, he's not going to come out with the horns and the tail. He's going to come in as the slickest car salesman you ever saw. You know, and the slickest, I've seen some pretty slick pastors on TV. Now that's not to say they're all like that. I mean, I love Sproul. I love Stanley, Charles Stanley. There's a lot of guys there that I all sit and I listen to and I go, okay, yeah, right on, dead on the middle. You know, I got it. But every time I hear something that goes a little left of center, you know what? What was that? You know, too much healing on TV. I don't know about that. That's showbiz, I think.